I just made a shocking discovery here at my own home. Something I was never aware of that could quite frankly be a bit dangerous. So in today's video, we're gonna dive deep into this and what it's revealed to me about my home. So today's job is to fit two more of these switches, one here in our bedroom and another one in the spare room to take things to the next level. And this amazing product is going to give us dimmable smart lighting up to three gangs, including in no neutral setups. So it's all very nicely packaged in here, very neatly laid out. This is our little frame that goes around the edge and this is our main event, this is the screen and it actually magnetizes onto this back plate, which is quite amazing. So the actual screen there, it's got no wires, no connections needed. All of the connections go in to this back plate here, which is really nice because you can basically wire that and screw it against the wall and then you just click the fascia on, the screen on. Inside the box as well, you've got a couple of other little things. You've got some long screws, which you might need, especially if you've got deep back boxes. You've got a little wire link, which you can use to link your neutral out from your connector block into the back. And you've got this little link here, which comes in handy in situations where you don't have a neutral. First, a little tip from me, just when you're changing switches in general, a Stanley knife is really useful because what you'll often find is that the old switches are painted in. So what I'm gonna do is just score around this switch just to break the seal of the paint. Now, this is an interesting one because there's actually a neutral loop in the back of this switch and it looks like it's a two way because there are switches by the bed. You can wire these up with two way scenarios, but usually what you should do is put two taps, one on each end and basically the other one just works wirelessly by the internet. So you don't, it doesn't actually need to do any wiring, which is really cool for new build properties because it means actually if you're wiring a, a property from scratch and you know that you're gonna fit, be fitting these smart switches, the taps, then you literally don't need to wire strappers between two-way switches. You can just wire the main switch and then you can put an unlimited number of taps wherever you want with no wires, just a power supply basically, and that will save you a lot on wiring. So of course, before you do any work on electrics like this, you want to safely isolate the circuit you're working on. So I've obviously carefully removed the switch now that I can test the wiring with a voltage tester just to make sure that when I turn the circuit breaker off, the switch is actually dead. Uh, this is also useful if you're not quite sure about the wiring. So in this particular case, I've got 240 volts there. Safe isolation is important, so I'm gonna go and turn this circuit off before I start taking off the old switch. So it should be this one, it's labeled lights first floor. We'll flick that off and then we'll test it again to make sure it's dead. And that is dead as a dodo. Now we're safe to work. So what we've got in this particular case is our three neutrals. So that'll be the neutral in, the neutral out, and the neutral to the light. Then we should have three permanent lives as well. The two-way switching, I'm literally just gonna disconnect because I'm not gonna use that switch. In fact, I didn't even know it was there. So I'm gonna just disconnect it. But what you could do if you wanted to do two-way switching, is just remove that switch and add another tap. For this case, I'm just gonna disconnect it, pop it in some Wargos so that it's safe, and then it can be put back how it was if I ever move out of the house. You will find that these Vargo connectors come in very, very handy. Here's a little trick for you. Can you see how they've doubled over these ones? So that tells me that that's the cable that goes over to the two-way switch. And then once I've eliminated these wires, it really simplifies things. These three are the neutrals, so they're all gonna connect together. So what I'm gonna do is come out of this connector block with just one wire into the back of my switch. The permanent lives will go together into a three-way connector block, and then that leaves us one spare slot to take the permanent live into the back of the tap. So we've got our three neutrals together in here with a spare slot for the one that goes into the tap. We've got our two permanent lives there with a spare to go into the back of the tap. And then this one will be our switch live that actually feeds the light and turns the light on. This is the bit of magic that basically does all the connections. So you've got up to three different lights that you can switch from this, L1, L2, and L3. So essentially it can be a three gang switch if you want it to. 
In fact, it can be more than that, but I'll explain that a little bit more later. So you've got your live and neutral in, so that's basically your permanent live and neutral. Then you've got L1, L2, and L3. But here's the clever thing, you can actually use this without a neutral as well. So if you're in a traditional older house where they just wired switch drops with a permanent live and switch live to the switch, you can wire these without a neutral and they will work. And simply to do that, you just bridge out the um, neutral and L1 terminals with this little bridge. So you literally just pop that in there and then that solves the problem because essentially there will be voltage between the permanent live and the switch line when the light is off and it just uses that power to run the whole device. So pretty clever stuff. So for the neutral, we're gonna use this little bit of neutral wire that comes supplied with the kit and that's just gonna connect into the N terminal. And then this wire is gonna go into our Vargo connector, pop that in there, clamp that down. That's our neutral done. Now our switch live is gonna be this one here and that's gonna connect straight in to our L1 terminal. It's just gonna pop that in, just tighten that up. And then that just leaves our permanent live, which is gonna come from this terminal here. And for that, I've just got a little bit of brown wire. So that is our permanent live. That's gonna go into our Vargo connector here. And that's it. It's wired up, simple as that. Now, if you had multiple lights, obviously, like I said, you could wire L2 and L3 off of this as well, but it's basically rinse and repeat. But the question you might be wondering is, is it actually gonna fit? And that's where this comes in. So this is quite clever because it just spaces it off slightly. That's just gonna give us the wiggle room that we need to get the switch screwed back properly. So before I screw it finally back the last couple of turns, I just wanna make sure it's level and then give it a final couple of turns to hold it in place. So let me flick the circuit breaker back on and see if it works. Now, Tuke have thought about everything because one concern I might have is what if this screen smashes or something like that and then you can't control your lights anymore. Well, they've got these manual buttons on here. So each of the switch gangs, you've got a manual button that you can turn them on and off, which means if the worst came to the worst and this did break, you've got a way to easily control your lights still. But now for the moment of truth, what happens when you click this thing on? Makes a lovely satisfying sound, listen to this. There we go. So this is where we've got to go through a few configuration steps and it's very simple to set up. So it asks, do we have a neutral wire? So we're gonna click yes. Which circuits are wired? We're just gonna click one so we can literally tap that, that's turning the lights on and off. Is circuit one dimmable? Well, I'm not sure, so I'm gonna give it a go. And it looks like this LED bulb that I've got in here, this LED lamp, sorry, bulbs grow, lamps glow, as they say. It is in fact dimmable by the looks of it. Adjust maximum brightness. So if you want, you can set the maximum brightness to be a little bit lower, but I'm just gonna put it on max for now. Click save and then we're all done. Now here is where we set up our different scenes. And for this, I wanna add something really clever. So we're gonna open the Tuke app. And then in here, what I'm gonna do is click plus and then add tap. And then it's gonna ask me to scan the QR code. And then it's literally gonna connect via Bluetooth. And that's it, it's online. So now we can finalize all of the settings. So I'm gonna connect a new room. So I'm gonna call this master bedroom and then click done, create room. Now I've selected master bedroom, it's created the room. Click select room and then that's gonna set this as being in my master bedroom. Now I'm gonna start configuration we're gonna name it and then we're gonna name the light. So because we've only got one light, it's giving me the option I can literally toggle it on and off. And I'm just gonna put master bedroom ceiling light. That's important because we're gonna add some more lights in this room shortly. So we're gonna click next and then we're gonna create some scenes. So for example, in the morning, if we want it nice and bright, when we wake up in the morning, we can select the main light. We can put it on full brightness and then we can click save to save the scene changes. Now there's one secret button on this device that we've not talked about yet. It's the subscribe button. And if you haven't hit it yet, please do. 
Now, what good would a smart switch be without being able to pair it with other smart devices, right? And Shelly do smart devices that can control pretty much anything. These smart plugs being a great example. And Tuke have very cleverly integrated the Shelly ecosystem into their app. So we're gonna add a Shelly device for my bedside lamp, and that's gonna enable us to create even more scenes. In the Shelly app, what we do is we add our new Shelly device. First of all, I'm gonna add a room and I'm gonna call it master bedroom and then save, add a device. And we're gonna do it via Bluetooth and then it's found my new Shelly plug straight away. So now in the Tuke app, I go to add smart socket and here it is. So I'm gonna click add and then it asks me what I'm plugging in. So I'm gonna put that it's a light and then we're gonna assign it to the master bedroom and that is added. So now here in the Tuke app, I should be able to literally turn it on and off, which is amazing. So now that we've added our smart plugs, this is where the magic happens. What we're gonna do is set a scene to enable us to turn all of these lights on at the same time. And to do that, it's really easy. We're gonna go into the master bedroom and cl click create room scene. And then we're gonna put, we're gonna call it cozy evening. We're just gonna turn on the bedside lamps, for example. We could also dim the master bedroom light if we want to. And what it'll do is very clever. See that? It's now popped up here, cozy evening. If I click cozy evening, that now turns on both lamps and the ceiling light, dim and cozy, ready for a nice evening of reading in bed. So all of our scenes are now set up exactly how we want them, but there's more to this switch that meets the eye, and here it is. This is the home health screen, and this is one of the reasons I wanted these in my house, is that everyone wants to optimize their health these days, I certainly do, and it's given me some quite scary intuition into some of the things that are going on in the house. For example, it's telling me right now that the humidity in here is 80%, which seems a bit extreme to me. Now, it might be because we've just set it up, it's calibrating all of its sensors, but I'll show you in my office, I keep getting alerts that the CO2 levels are really high and I can't quite figure it out why. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Come with me and I'll show you. So here's my study and I've got it set up so that my lamp on my desk comes on and off when I go into study mode. But if I swipe across here, you can see now it says the home health is good. It's 100, 52% humidity, the temperature is 18.2 degrees, the air quality is 51, which is optimum, and the CO2 is 500 parts per million. So everything's optimum, which is why it's giving me a 100 health score. But in the app, what I've noticed is that the CO2 levels tend to spike up really high in this room and I can't quite figure out why. So if I go into the health tab here, it gives me an overview of the home health for the entire property, which is great. And I can see as I scroll through quite quickly that everything's at 100 at the moment other than the master bedroom. But like I said, I think that's just because it's adjusting. Interestingly, if I go into my office and have a look at the CO2 levels, I can see that here in the morning, it spikes up. So it was up at nearly a thousand parts per million. And if I look at the week view from last week, you can see the number of times that it spiked up high. It's quite scary actually. So the kitchen you can see here spikes up at like 6 p.m. on Saturday. But I think that's probably to do with cooking. If we look at the humidity levels, they're pretty constant other than at the weekend and it was really, really rainy at the weekend. And then in terms of the temperature, we've been having problems with the heat pump. In fact, I made a video about the heat pump here. I'll leave a link up here where you can watch that. We're still configuring it to get it just right. And so it's been dipping down quite cold to about the 17, 18 degrees mark. But you can see actually yesterday we tweaked the settings on the heat pump and the average temperature has come up a bit now. So it's just great to be able to have all of this home health data. I'm certainly gonna be nerding out over it and learning a lot about this new property. The thing is, if I didn't have this, I would be completely clueless to the fact that I was getting unhealthy levels of CO2 spiking up in my house. At least now that I've got the data, 
I can do something about it. Yeah, it's a bit scary, but actually I'd rather know and be able to do something about it than not know at all. So in a room like this, the kitchen, this is where the system really comes into its own because we've got multiple lamps, multiple lights. We've got the ceiling lights here. We've got the one above the table. We've got the under cabinet lights and all the different lamps. So for example, what I've done is I've set a scene here that does the lamps. So this one literally switches on and off all four of the Shelly lamps, which gives a really nice cozy feel. Then in the morning when I come in to make my coffee, I just turn this scene on and that does the under unit lights and the lamp on the counter, for example. Or of an evening, if we just wanna have a really cozy feel, it turns on the dining table lamp as well. And then if I do all on, that will literally just turn everything on so it's nice and bright in here, which is handy for cleaning and things like that. So here in the living room, we've got it set up for movie nights that so puts the lamps on nice and cozy when we're watching a film. It's just so cool how it offers you so many different flexible options. It's kind of the ultimate smart home tool because it's so easy to change settings, to add lamps without lots of complicated and expensive wiring adjustments. Think of some of the smart home systems out there where you need to actually like call an engineer to change some of the settings and stuff. With this, it's so simple for the end user to do all of that adjustment and it's really flexible and expandable for the future. But Tuke is quite a new company, so you might wonder, well, you know, what's gonna happen with this product in the future? It's still quite early stages. And it's really interesting because they've built nine different sensors into this product. Now, not all of them are used currently, but the hardware is there. And every week on a Tuesday, they do a software update an over-the-air update to all users, which enables you to get more features and improvements out of the product. It also enables them to make any changes quickly if there are any little bugs or issues they can adapt and make those changes quickly just via an over-the-air update. The hardware really is seriously clever. And with all of those sensors, it opens up a whole host of opportunities for automations. They've got AI integrations coming with Google to enable you to talk to your tap and ask it questions about the health of your home and for example, when is the best time to turn the washing machine on? In fact, I haven't shown you that yet, but it's got the integration with your smart tariffs as well. So it can tell you instantaneously what the energy price is at the moment. And if you were on an agile tariff, for example, where the energy price is high, it can even help you to use less energy by switching off lights at certain times of the day, or potentially in times when you're actually getting paid to use electricity, turn stuff on. It really, really is a cool, flexible gadget for your entire home health, lighting, automation, all of that stuff in one. So I've been super impressed with this product. I must admit, I had my doubts when I first heard about it. I just thought it was gonna be another gimmick, another smart switch, but it really does so much more than just control your lights. And this could well be the future hub of the smart home. To be able to have products like this, which can improve the quality of your life, improve your home health, for me is quite incredible. And I'm really excited to see this roll out to the homes of many of our customers. So if you're an installer who's been looking for a product like this, you can get it from CEF, I'll leave a link below. And if you'd like to become part of Tuke's installer network, they're looking to get more installers on board and trained so that there's more people out there in the world fitting these products. So I'll leave all of the information down below. And thanks for Duke for sponsoring today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.